So whether you're buying or selling a home, the home inspection is a critical part of the home buying or selling process. And so what we're gonna do today is take a high level view of the home inspection process, look at a couple of the key details and a little bit of the perspective, depending on what side of a transaction you're on in terms of the relevance of home inspections. So welcome back to the channel. My name is Sammy Fryer, licensed realtor in the state of South Carolina. And today I'm joined by my friend Mike Jones, who is the owner and operator of Genesis Home Inspections. And so Mike is going to give us a walkthrough of the home inspection process and tell you what you need to know when it comes to home inspections. So, hey, Mike, how you doing? Good. How are you, Sam? Good. I just feel like I'm sinking in this couch. I right? hear that. But other than that, I'm all right. So you are Mike with Genesis Home Inspections, and yes. I've done some work with you, and that's been a pleasure. So why don't you introduce yourself, and then we'll get into a little bit about what you do. Okay. I am Michael Jones, the owner of Genesis Home Inspections. Uh, we have, uh, as of now, we have two other licenses, so there's three total licensed home inspectors uh, working for us. Uh, I've been doing construction for, I've had my own, comp own company for probably 25 years. Um, I've been licensed as a home inspector in the state of South Carolina for the last 10. Um, I've been on all sides of it. I have built new construction, I have remodeled homes, but the focus of Genesis Home Inspection is to, is to provide a quality home inspection for, for, the, for buyers. Great, so I know that you guys' home inspections are very thorough and I just think that it would be a benefit to the audience, regardless of what side of a transaction they're on, what role they play in the transaction, to have more in-depth understanding of what a home inspection entails, what are some of the things they should expect, and then we can kind of get maybe into some more of the details beyond that. So why don't you just give us a general overview of home inspections really in general? Okay. Well, how, typically how the process will start is either a client or an agent will call to set up a home inspection. Uh, we'll, we schedule the home inspection and then how that, how, how the client and the agent are where we, we send out a, through our software, they'll, they'll receive an email with a DocuSign that explains all the steps, all the, all the parts of a home inspection, and uh, and the and the the client will have to DocuSign that, so they saying they understand, and then uh, they're emailed their invoice, so their invoice they'll have right from the start before we ever go to the property. Everybody will know, everybody's aware of what's going on, and then uh, we, you know we schedule we schedule the inspection, and uh, and we head out we head out that day whether no matter what side no matter what side you're on whether the buyer or your or your the seller looking to have a pre-listing inspection it's the, the process all starts the same um, then you know the the fees the fees for the uh, for the home inspection will, will vary depending on the property so if it's a slab construction is is always is always going to be a little bit cheaper it's a less you know a lot less time for a home inspector on site mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, a crawl space inspection typically the the average difference is about a hundred dollars for the equivalent size size house okay. so so if you have if you're under two two thousand square feet, you know typically as a crawl space you're gonna you're gonna start about four hundred dollars in that range, mm -hmm. and in uh, as a slab you're gonna start about three hundred dollars in that range for for under two thousand square feet, and okay. it just it goes up incrementally from there. Okay, and so when you guys get out to the property, um, you know what all are you inspecting? What are you looking for? We're doing a, a visual inspection of the property, so and it's typically is. At any aspect of that that we can get to that's, that f follows under our state guidelines. We always start with the outside of the house. So we'll do the outside of the house because that's what tells us the, about the property itself and it'll also give us any warning signs to things we might need to look for inside the house. Mm -hmm. For example, if it's, a, if, if it's got cracking in the brick or if there may be things that we need to look further into inside the house. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll start with the exterior which will include the roof. Um, when you get to the roof, everybody needs to understand that a roof, anything over a 512 pitch is not allowed to be walked on. So that roof would be viewed visually from the ground, you, you know, with, with binoculars. Um, anything, a two-story roof is not allowed to be walked on. You, to, to be able to walk on those, you have to be strapped by state law. You have to be able to be strapped to the roof. Well, there's no way as a, and a home inspector could, would be able to set up all, the, all that, that kind of harnessing to, to be able to get on a roof right. in the time for home inspection. Uh, but we look at the siding, we look at the windows, doors, we try to operate as much and many things as possible. Um, 
We're looking for any kind of shutoffs we can find for the property, whether it be the gas, electric, water, any kind of any, any anything that we can, any information we can give to a buyer to help them to be able to understand. Because no one ever, no one cares where their water shutoff is till they need it. Right. And that's the thing is, I like to try to make it, you know everybody as prepared as possible. So before something happens, they're they're they they know what's going on. Right. Then we'll then we typically will go we'll go into the house. We'll start with the main functions of the house. We run all the water. We 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 check the receptacles. We check the light fixtures. Anything we can get to. If we can get to the electric panel, we try to pull the panel cover and at least take a look inside and see mm -hmm. see see what's going on inside the panel. Uh, we run do tr we run the appliances, which will be the fixed appliances. Everybody needs to understand. Fixed appliances don't include a refrigerator. It's not considered a fixed appliance or, a, for example, a microwave that's sitting on the counter. If the microwave is mounted to the cabinets, then it's considered a fixed appliance. Um, typically, there's always a range or, or an oven, and uh, you know, th those, are, those are always included. Just, we run the disposal, those kind of things. Um, we, do, we do run the dishwashers. You know, we, we, try, we try to run all the things we can. We're not, we, again, a non-fixed appliance would include a washer and dryer. So we can't run the washer and dryer inside a house, so you always have to remember that, we'll, yes, we'll look at the valves and we'll look at the different things we can, but we're not allowed to, to, run, those, to run those pieces of equipment. Mm -hmm. so, so it's just, just something to be aware of. Um, but we, we try to we open and close the doors, we open and close the windows, try to make sure, make sure that at least one window per bedroom opens because that's by, you, you, had to ha you have to have two forms of, uh, for in case of a fire to be able to, to escape, you know, and that's the thing. That, that's one of the most important things to remember, um, that there's, whether it be two doorways or whether it be a doorway and a window, that, that there's two, two ways out of, any, of, a, of a bedroom. So let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you guys can't, for various reasons, get onto the roof, but there are certain signs that you look for that are great indicators if there could potentially be roof problems where you could let a potential buyer know, hey, you may need to get a roofer on there to take a look at the roof. That that's exactly right. There's definitely things I know everybody. I, I know it's hard to understand, but as you the more roofs you see, the more you the more warning signs that you can under you, that you you're able to see from the ground and determine that look this roof is aged. This roof even if even if it's stated the roof's five years old doesn't mean that there, it doesn't it's not getting worn. It doesn't have areas. And in those situations, how we look at it is we're trying to recommend you to the next level, which would be in a case of a roof, we'd recommend that you have a come have a roofer come. Mm -hmm. and check this roof someone that can actually legally get on that roof and be able to to physically put, right. put hands on it so another question that i've gotten before is sometimes people are confused at why they should pay for a co100 inspection and a home inspection and i know that there's obviously some overlap to your inspections and whenever the Correct. termite guys come in but what would you say are some of the advantages in terms of some of the structural issues that potential buyers could run into that the CL100 is not going to pick up, but that you guys would find. Well, I mean, I, I mean, and then, and it will also depend on you know what what company you're using you're using for both. But there's there's a lot of, there's a lot of aspects to a to, to a crawl space, which is typically I guess what we would be speaking about here would be a crawl space. Yeah. Because that's the main part inspected you know by by a termite inspector. But there's a lot of other. For example, typical. A lot of times there's duct work in the crawl space. A lot of times there's electrical in the ducts. In, in, excuse me, in the crawl space. There's, there's so many facts. A, a termite inspector isn't qualified to be able to tell you that the structure of your house needs a, needs a support right here and this support is missing, or whether these floor joists are cut out in this area and need to be, need to be replaced, or whether these repairs are adequate or inadequate you know, in, in, in the repairs that were made. There's, there's yeah. several different aspects that, that, that do overlap, but there's more aspects that that we go in depth further than than a than a termite inspector would do. And and not only that, but you guys are going throughout the entire house. That's exactly right. So you guys are setting eyes on more house than the average termite inspection is doing also, right, that, Rome? That is definitely correct. Yeah. Right. We're our average time on site for for a crawl space home is two and a half to three hours. Yeah. I would be willing to wager your average time for C one hundred is probably 30 to 45 minutes, you know, and it's, it, they're, they're doing their job. I'm not saying they're not, but it's just, we have, we're that much more in depth on, on what you're, on what you're, you're getting. 
So, and just a disclaimer, that's not to minimize the CL100 or the termite inspectors right. out there. But the point is that for your loan, you're going to be required to have that CL100 inspection. But typically, a home inspection is something that you're doing on your own initiative. And so this is giving you perspective. This is giving you eyes on the entirety of the house beyond what a typical CL100 inspection provides. So that's why I wanted to bring that up and have him expound on that a little bit. So basically it sounds like from the ground up, you guys are at least getting eyes on the whole house. As much and as we possibly can. As much as you can. So, and that, that's actually something I want you to talk about too, when we start to get into some of the, the caveats to some of these things. Cause I know that when places are obstructed and you can't get to them, that, that severely hinders the quality of the inspection. That's, so, and I know yes. you probably could share some things about that that would help people understand how to kind of put you guys in a better position. Yeah. What, if anything, is not covered in a home inspection? The first thing to remember is the, the home inspection, when you call for a home inspection, the home inspector is scheduling to inspect the actual st structure of that house. Any building that's detached is not included on that inspection unless it's talked about prior at the time of schedule at the time of scheduling the inspection mm -hmm. so that it can it, it can be you know it can be worked in so always remember if it's detached that it's that it has to be has to be talked about first um, tip, so typically th those buildings won't be done whether it be a shed up to a pool house any of those kind of things that aren't aren't attached to the physical structure of the property okay. um, the well system is, is not inspected by the home inspector. Mm -hmm. I will tell you that we do run the, obviously we run the water through the house. So if there's a pressure issue, if there's something that, that gives us hindrance, we'll, we'll make mention of that. But it's, but it's not, the actual well, well itself is, isn't covered. The septic system is the same. A septic, if, again, if there's reason that we see that you, we, 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 we believe you need to have an inspection done, we'll let you know, but, but it doesn't mean that because 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 you have a septic system, it doesn't mean, and we don't mention anything. Doesn't mean you don't need that inspected. We want to make sure you understand right. that, and anything prior to 1980 in this area is typically going to be a, a, a built block tank. So those tanks those tanks are getting older. They won't be a cast tank, which you'll have after 1980. Just a little note to know. Um, sprinkler systems are not covered by home inspection. Um, the uh, a pool and pool equipment are not covered under under home inspection. So that's really good information, especially about the swimming pool. Uh, that that's not that's not covered on the home inspection. That would be a separate inspection. Correct. And so I don't know if a lot of people would know that. One thing that I want to say is that, you know, if I'm representing you, then whenever you have the home inspection completed and we get that report back, I'm going to go over that with you. You know, that's that's something that your agent is going to do is sit down and go through that inspection, and it can be multiple pages a lot of times it will be they're going to talk through that with you and you guys can discuss it but i just want to let you know that your home inspector also is available for you to reach out to and they're really going to be able to speak more intelligently to a lot of the things that are on that report than 95 percent of us agents will although we can walk you through it and and should know some things the home inspector can really can really give you the details of what's on that report would you agree with that i would i would i think it's i think it's very important that everyone when you're you're buying a house, there's no dumb question. I'd rather right. you ask me a million questions and fully understand the, the, the purchase, the, the property that you're purchasing, understand all the parts of that report because the biggest, the biggest questions we get are about things that, that people didn't understand after the fact. And it's, it's just, it, the more knowledge you have going into this process and you have at the end, the, when, you, when you get into your home, the better off everybody's, the better off everybody's yeah. gonna be. You know, there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of scary things sometimes that show up on a home inspection report that, that, that sound scary that sometimes aren't that big a deal. And that just, you just need to be made to understand what's going on. And there's times where things may not seem like a big deal that maybe are a little bit more of a big deal. And it's, it's, all, never, it's, always, it's always a good, a good idea to, to have a conversation with your inspector about the property. You don't want to get into a home you don't want to purchase a home for hundreds of thousands of dollars and then close on that house only to find out a month two months three months a year two years down the road that there's forty thousand dollars worth of issues that you have to address and it can happen the whole point of these home inspections on the front end is to identify these potential pitfalls 
on the front end before that ever happens. And then you can make an educated decision if, as to if you want to proceed or not or how you want to go about it. So I know that, Mike, you have some certain things that are just good tips and advice that you like to go over in educating consumers and agents about the home inspection process and what you guys do. Mm -hmm. So why don't you just kind of go through those things that you normally like to share? This one will really go for any, no matter where you are in the process, whether you're the seller, the seller's agent, or the listing agent, is the number, number one is the utilities for the property need to be on. For, so it doesn't mean that if a property has a gas meter in it, but it has no gas appliances, the gas needs to be on, but it means any the water and electric, no matter what, always need to be on for the inspection because a lot of what we do is going to be geared off of one or the other and a lot of times off of both. For example, if we don't have water, we can't do any of the appliances in the house. You know, I mean, you, you can't check the plumbing. You know, you're, you're, you're not, we're not going to be able to do at least 20 to 25 percent of our inspection because we don't have we don't have these utilities. Very important that we have the utilities utilities on. Um, number two is that we have access to these to these things. Mm -hmm. um, if the attic is a scuttle hole in a closet, and that closet's jammed full of stuff, there's not, I'm not legally allowed to move anything in the house. You know we're not allowed to move people's belongings. We can't make space for it. Someone yeah. has to clear that space for That's us. That's key, though, that you say that, because I think that sometimes people may have the impression of, well, why didn't they just move it out the way? Well, A, you could say it's not their job to move it out of the way, but right. B, you're not allowed to move people's property out of the way. That's exactly right. Yeah, that's important. Yep, yep. And so so the having the utilities on, having access having access to the to the things, if if you're the seller of the house that any pets you might have, any anything that's going to be a hindrance like that. And I understand Fluffy loves you and he's nice to you and he's good to you. Doesn't mean Fluffy's going to like right. me. You know, we <laughs> need to remember that that sometimes that your, your your pet's always going to act be nice even with strangers in front of you. But when you're not at the property, that's their home and that's their place that they're trying to protect. So it's you can't just put your dog in the backyard. It needs to either be kenneled or it needs to be in a secure place or it needs to be taken away for the time of the inspection if, if you're selling a house. So another thing to consider about in, in the process is, is there any, is there any special, special instructions for that property? If there, you know, whether there be a, you know, a pet or something in the garage or, or there be a, a room that's locked up for a certain reason or any, anything that the home inspector needs to know, we need to make sure that you know, that's communicated prior, you know, prior to the mm -hmm. inspection. If there's an alarm at the property, that the alarm, we ask that the alarm be shut off. You know, the, the, the cops in the local area know us well. They pull up and give us a wave and move on because so many times we've, we've popped a door <laughs> and, and an alarm go off, you know. So it's, uh, so it's, it's always helpful for us, in, and it's just better for everybody if, if the alarm shut off or if we're at least provided the code, whatever's needed to, to, to make our job go smoothly and easily. The more time we get, get focused and get in, in, in into our job, the, the better, you know, I mean, it's just the better it's going to be for everybody. Um, you know, and then, then a couple of the things to pay attention to, you know, when, when you're, when you're going to buy a house, for an example, would be like, let's say, let's say you're, you're going to buy a house and there's a, there's a gas, it's a vacant house and there's gas, natural gas ran to the house, but there's the, the gas meters, the gas meter's been locked out or it's turned off. One thing you got, it's critical that you remember is when you come back later and you want to add something gas, let's say you want to put in, you know, even if there's nothing gas there, you want to put in a gas fireplace. When the gas company comes to turn that on, you have to be, that, that gas has, that gas and piping has to be brought up to today's code. So today's code, I will tell you, it's in the gas industry changes quite a lot. Mm. So a gas meter that was installed even, say, 15, 20 years ago, you could have thousands of dollars in upgrades to be able to get that for that upgraded to where to where you'd be able to to have a, your gas meter turned on to be mm -hmm. able to have so it's it's just always smart to if you're the buyer and make sure the buyer's agent make sure that you if there's gas to the property you have have that gas turned on prior prior to buying that house got it yeah that's super important uh, just these things that could cost a lot of money on the back end that you'd wish you'd have known on the front end yes so why don't we go over because depending on what role you have in a transaction or you know what your position is in it there's kind of a variety in these inspections so why don't you go over some of the different types 
Okay. The most the most popular inspection would be you know where we're, we're, we're representing buyers. So when buying a house, they want us to go inspect the property that they're purchasing. Mm -hmm. um, then probably next would be would be a pre-listing inspection we call it, where you're getting ready to sell your property. But before you list it, you'd like to have somebody come in and just make sure any of the big things that can come up during a real estate transaction that you can avoid those things, have any repairs needed to be done prior to listing it. As we both know that you know th those pro there's repairs that could have been avoided sometimes or you know will cause a will cause a real estate transaction. Call a deal to fall through all the that, time. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So I think that's a good general overview, and I know that there are multiple caveats just like all things you know in this industry or any industry for the most part a lot of things are on a case-by-case -case basis and so there's all these little elements of nuance to things related to home inspections but i think that's a good general overview that at least would give a buyer a seller a buyer's agent a seller's agent a little bit of an idea of what a home inspection entails generally what they could cost in our area correct <laughs> And um, and some of the the value that comes from and what to expect and what's not covered. So there's a lot of key things that you said related to all of those things. So Mike, I appreciate you taking the time to come educate us on this stuff a little Thank bit. You. And again, this is Mike Jones. He's the owner and operator of Genesis Home Inspection. And as always, all of their contact information is down in the description portion of this video. So if you have any questions that maybe we did not cover and you're looking to get a home inspection done or you're going to need one in the future and you'd like to ask you can leave a comment down in the comment section of this video also his contact information and mine is down in the description portion so i hope that you found this video helpful and we wish you all the best in your real estate endeavors and in the meantime y'all take care and we'll see you on the next one